Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop, your weekly podcast all about Adobe Photoshop, available in high def. Today, we're going to take a look at layer masking. Now, a mask is something that hides inside of Photoshop, and there's lots of ways to use masks. Sometimes you'll apply a mask to a selection, to a adjustment layer, or sometimes right to a layer to hide things. That's what we're going to do today. I've got two photos, and I'm going to show you how to generate a layer mask so you could store that selection as saved transparency. Let's jump in. On our first photo here, we're going to be trying to select just this statue. Now, if you actually have the book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4, there's a special code on the DVD. Just put that disk in, and you can actually access these same photos that we use in the podcast. Let's see how we could take this picture and cut it out. If you don't have access to this photo, just grab a photo of your own and try the same techniques. One of the first things we need to do is actually turn this into a layer. So I double click and name the layer, and we're going to be very logical here and just call it statue. Now, I need to extract just this head, and there's several ways of doing that. We could make a selection, we could use the pen tool, we could try the quick selection tool here. Let's see how that does. We'll drag through and attempt to make a selection, and it's doing pretty well, actually. Dragging through the object, and that's what I like about the quick selection tool. It's fairly accurate, even though it's quick. There we go. And just about have it. Good. Now, I want to store that as a layer mask, and it did great, except for this little divot on the back of the head here. But that's okay. Layer masks are completely editable. So to add the mask, we're going to go ahead and click on the layer mask icon here, and it's going to go ahead and add that to the layer. You see it did a good job. Got a little bit of fringe here, hard edge. We could trim that up very easily using the masks panel. Let's go ahead and call it the navigator for a second. Window. Show all menu items. And we'll choose the navigator. I'll go ahead and adjust the zoom slider here and reposition the red box so we're looking at the back of the head. And you see that small divot. Simply click on the layer mask thumbnail, and it's got a selection border there, and we could paint with the black paintbrush. Press B for brush, and remember, left bracket, smaller brush, right bracket, bigger brush. So a nice small brush, paint with black, and we can remove that from the little divot. Now we still have a bit of fringe here, and that's easy to fix. If you're using Photoshop CS4, you have the very useful masks panel. If you don't, you could still manually fix this. I'm going to do it the Photoshop CS3 way or earlier first, and then I'll show you how we could do it in CS4. With the layer mask selected, I'm going to choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll run that at a small value of about 1.0. You see that's already softening that edge quite a bit. We could then press Command L for levels and move the middle slider. And you'll see as we pull that, it either expands the mask or contracts it a little. And that does a nice job of fixing the edge up. Now, that works great. If you have CS4, just jump over to the Masks panel. You'll find that right above here with Adjustments, and you could then simply click Feather if you need to, and that'll do a nice job softening. You can also click Mask Edge and get much greater control. Let's view this over red, and I'll go ahead and adjust the smoothness and the feather to a low value, and I'll contract it just a few percentage points to choke that in a bit. That looks great. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and let's just zoom out. Command-0 to see the actual pixels. Command-, minus pulls in a little more, and that looks great. You'll see we actually extracted that photo easily from the backdrop, and we can then composite this into anything else, whether it be a multimedia piece, a video production, or maybe even a page layout program. So we've gone ahead and created a layer mask that non-destructively hides those areas we don't want. If you change your mind, you could just shift-click on the layer mask to disable it, and you'll see the entire picture come back in. So that's very, very flexible. Now, if you join us next week, we're going to talk about alpha channels, and we'll show you how to store that transparency with the document when you save it out to specialized file types like TIFF or PICT files. But let's do one more layer mask really quickly now on another image. I'm going to switch over to a new photo here, and this one's going to be a piece of cake. You'll see here we've got a nice high contrast area. 
we have this ruined wall up front and a brighter sky behind. I'm going to just switch over to channels and take a look. And to me, it looks like the blue channel's just about there. Notice how the sky is almost a pure white and everything else is a darker shade of gray. We'll simply right click on the blue channel or go ahead and just grab that actually and drag it on the new icon and make a copy. I'm going to call that alpha since it'll be a stored selection. We can now press Command or Control L to invoke a levels command. And what I want to do is pull the blacks in so all those darker grays just go to pure black. Notice when we get to the edge of that hump there how it's been pushed. And then this area here is the light grays. So if I move the white slider to the end of that, you'll see that the cloudy skies and the haze go to pure white. That worked great. I'll go ahead and click OK. We can now command click on that thumbnail to load it. Now on a Mac, that's a command click. On a Windows machine, just control click. Either way, click on the thumbnail and it converts it to an active selection. We can then throw that alpha channel away if we don't need it anymore. Come on over, make sure this is an actual layer. Let's call this wall. And then click the button that adds a new layer mask to that selected layer. Now, it did a great job. It kept everything but the wall. Don't worry, it's super easy to change this. You can go ahead and click on the mask here and it's selected. And in the masks panel, click invert and it will switch. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, simply select that mask and press Command or Control I to also do the invert. And there you have it. You see we've actually masked out the sky completely, getting perfect selection around the wall, everything. And in fact, this one needs no tweaking. It's actually just about perfect on the first try. Now, depending upon your skill level, it may take you a few tries, but the more you practice with these layer masks, the easier they get. And layer masking is an absolute essential skill. Do not waste time with things like Extract or the Eraser tool. Instead, do this non-destructively using layer masks. My name's Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. We've got lots more things you can learn. Just visit our blog at rastervector.com. And if you're looking to pick up a new book, be sure to check out Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4 from PeachPit Press. You can use the discount code UAP2 to take 35% off over at their website. Thanks again for joining us.